man, that that intro music always just makes me feel like dancing. And you know, it's it's easy to dance head up because I can do a little bit of this business. I uh, you know everything like you know shoulders down. I'm a mess. Nobody needs to see that. And so um, you know, anyway, welcome to today's episode of Dev Central Connect Special Edition. This is one of our pop up shows that we do every every now and then. And uh, today we're going to do some live coding in Python, and we're going to look at packet captures on the big IP. And I have a couple articles that I've done previously. We're going to go through those in a minute, and then we'll get on to the coding. Uh, before we do that, however, I just want to thank you all for being here. And I want to tell you a little bit about uh, stuff that's coming up. As always, if you want to see what's coming up, uh, we always uh, publish the the upcoming shows at community.f5.com in our Dev Central Connects group. So make sure you register, join the group. You'll get notifications there, of course. You can also uh, click subscribe and enable your notifications here on YouTube. And then you will uh, get notified when when we do these things. Uh, so make sure you join us uh, over Dev Central. Not only do we do uh, the videos here out in the YouTube, LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, Facebook area, uh, we also have tremendous uh, written content that that comes in the door every day our content manager rebecca maloney does a fantastic job scheduling stuff out and and our SMEs that are contributing the content is just really stellar content and so you want to make sure you join us for that as, and as well as you, you have questions you need answers and we have forums for that so join us over there you you will not be sorry uh, to be a member of uh, a vibrant and, and very helpful community and kind everybody in, in this community is very kind and so make sure uh, to head over again, community.f5.com. Uh, this is a pop-up show. It's Thursday, February 9th. Normal Dev Central Connects proper is on Tuesdays at 8.30 a.m. Pacific. And this coming Tuesday on Valentine's Day, we've got Sebastian Maniac, friend of the show, uh, MVP, and he's going to be talking all things HashiCorp. So make sure you join Boo and Sebastian on Tuesday. And then a really special thing that's coming up, uh, Aubrey King uh, and I are going to be doing a series of videos on starting from the ground up. We're going to build an app and and we're going to start with, you know, where are we, we going to host it and how are we going to connect it and what are all the pieces? So this will iterate over several shows and we're going to build it live. So uh, the first step next week is, you know, I've got a customer edge uh, device sitting over on my shelf that the fans are screaming right now. Hopefully you can't hear them. I can hear them and they're driving me nuts. I'm going to have to move that box into another room, but uh, my customer edge is is running on that box amongst uh, several other things, including the big IP that we'll address today. And then Aubrey has one of those in, in his, actually, I think Aubrey has a, a few of those. And and then uh, Boo has one as well. So I, I, I don't know how many of us are going to get it on the, on, on the build, but we're going to build it live. It's going to be a lot of fun. And we'll we'll start with building out the infrastructure, then we'll build out the app, then we'll uh, you know publish the app, and and then we'll start layering on some uh, you know well advised services based on what happens to the, an, an app that you deploy out in the wild if you if you don't protect it. So that'll be a lot of fun. And finally, before we get into stuff, microservices March uh, Nginx is uh, going to bring it. And they're going to bring it hard and fast in in March, and so we are going to be a part of that. Boo's going to have some content on on the uh, proper uh, on uh, Tuesdays at eight thirty a.m. Pacific, and then I'm going to be doing labs live. The labs for microservices March. I'm going to be doing them live on Thursdays at uh, eleven a.m. Pacific, and so we'll have a lot of content coming to you at, in March on the video side, but also on the article side. So make sure to stay tuned for that. And we have uh, Josh, welcome. How's it going? And Boo, hey Boo. And he's uh, very much looking at this. Sebastian's always always a fantastic guest. A lot of fun. Boo, I like that that helmet you're rocking there. And uh, you, that almost looks like a helmet that you wear when you know you're going to fall a lot. That's not like the, uh, you know, the, the, <laughs> the Harley Davidson uh, cycle riders who have like, you know, the, the basic little tiny little cup on the top of their head. It's like, yeah, I've got this. I'm never going to fall. Uh, that looks a, a little bit more like you're, you're, you're approaching danger. And, and uh, Kevin has a question. What is the biggest IP capture? Uh, 
I I don't know. You mean the biggest one you can take on on a big IP? Uh, I would be I would think that that would be uh, you know the limitation of your um, uh, your file system on big IP unless you're going to stream it without capturing. And you can do that, like if you set a SSL tunnel up from your desktop and capture and have it sent, then it's, you know, however however long you want to send those packets. Uh, that might be a, a performance hit on your system to be able to do that while simultaneously handling uh, your data traffic. But but it is something that you could set up if you, uh, if you wanted to do that. All right. Well, let's kind of talk about the, uh, the, the topic of the day. And we'll start with here the... Uh, what what started it all? Uh, a couple people uh, within uh, support organization, and then also just something that, that I had wanted to do in a while. It's like if I if I knew that I needed to be able to take packet captures, but the uh, you know the the big IP itself, I have to I have to go out, I have to log into the big IP, and I have to initiate the packet capture there, and then I come back to my device that I want to uh, test to the big IP under or against, and then I kick off my test. And then then I go back to my my big IP and I stop the test. And then I have to, you know, uh, move those files. And if I need the security keys, I need to be able to export those keys locally and then, or collect those keys if I'm doing it through iRules or, or whatever. And then I need to download all those files and make sure I delete them off the big IP so I have space if, if I took a fairly large packet capture. And, and then, you know, I have all that stuff locally. And, and if I do have session keys that, that I need to tackle um, for Wireshark, then it, there's ways you can do it manually to where you load the, the file into Wireshark and then it decaps, decrypts your packet capture. And so that's a process that we've had for a really long time. I don't want to do that. Uh, there's, a, there's a book, a, a Python book uh, that, that I've uh, referenced for a while. I haven't read it all the way through. Uh, a lot of people swear by it and say, read it all the way through. You'll be glad you did. Uh, but it's, you know, automate the boring stuff, right? And in some of it's like automate the repetitive stuff. And maybe maybe they mean, you know, boring uh, with repetitive. Those, they use those exchangeable. But uh, it's one of those things where I think you can solve, uh, you can save a lot of time in, in your troubleshooting efforts if you just kind of automated that process. And for me, I, I limit it to about a minute of capture uh, when I'm doing it in uh, in the code, but you can you can set that. In fact, the second iteration of it, we did exactly that. So the very first one, it was kind of centered around taking a packet capture for uh, for a, a support case. If if you're familiar with opening support cases, you know they want packet captures, they want a quick quick view, uh, they want those names bound to the case number, and they want MD5 checksums and and all those things. And that can take quite a little, quite a bit of time to collect, but uh, in the first iteration of this, I just went through and was able to automate the packet capture on Big IP from a script running remotely, and then collect that, collect a quick quick view, download them, delete them off the Big IP. Everything's named according to the case number. It's all good to go. That's this uh this that I'm doing here, and I, I did uh, talk about that on the core uh, back when that was a show uh, back last year. And so that was the first iteration. The second iteration was actually decrypting the uh, the the packet capture. And so I did that. I also, in this case, uh, I removed the requirement of needing to bind it to a case because you, you may want to just use this for troubleshooting purposes. So there is a second utility that really just focuses around uh, collecting a packet capture not associated with any support case. And as well as what it does is it downloads the packet capture and then it uses uh, edit cap, uh, which installs automatically with Wireshark if you install Wireshark on your system. And then it will take the session keys that you have in your file uh, along with your capture. And then if you give it an output of an another packet capture, then you have the original packet capture with encrypted traffic and then the decrypted file with uh, obviously decrypted traffic. And so that way uh, you get into the analysis stage of your packet capturing right away. And uh, and so that was the second article that I did. And that was back in, when was that? Uh, oh, that was, uh, that was last month. Wow, it feels like it was a long time ago, but it's only actually been a few weeks. So that was uh, what I did uh, in the second iteration. 
in the first iteration, maybe. And okay, here it is. Uh, uh, Jurgen uh, Meng, I hope I'm saying your name right. Uh, one of our MVPs, he uh, said that, you know, the way the way that I built the solution is it uses a set of I rules. And I'll show those to you in a minute. Uh, but it uh, allows you to use the um, this database key here, this sys, uh, DB TCP dump SSL provider. And if you enable that, that uh, that database key and then use the F5 flag in the TCP dump, then it will embed those keys into your traffic, um, into your traffic capture. And so, you know, that for, for me, it, it's a great thing and, and it's great for being able to troubleshoot, but also it's like, you know, the dory approaching the, the trench and, and finding an email, it's like, whoa, red flag there. Um, it, it's kind of like one of those things you gotta be really cautious um, with with doing that because you know, those are your, those are your keys. And, and so when you embed that in a pack, you just got to remember that it's actually embedded in that packet capture. So you want to be able to, uh, you know, guard those. Um, but nevertheless, it's, it's tremendously valuable and you can do it. So what, what we'll, uh, we'll kind of walk through how we're going to approach changing the solution I'm using with iRules into the solution with using the, the F5 flag. And we'll get there. So anyway, I wanted to show you what he contributed. Uh, he's got this linked in the code share on Dev Central, uh, but he's also got it out on GitHub. And and he kind of walks through that process. And here's here's a, effectively what we're going to change about the the solution I built here. And that we got to uh, enable the SSL provider, run the TCP dump with those flags, and then disable the SSL provider. So disabling that SSL provider that's that's key. You don't want to leave that on. And and then he wrote a Perl script to take all of that out of the packet capture on the big IP. And you can look at that. It's, it's Perl. Um, Perl and I go way back. Perl is actually my gateway drug into, into programming uh, in a, you know, like career environment. I, I did a C and C++ in college around my avionics degree, which I don't use. Uh, but I, I got a lot of good experience there. And then in, um, and in one of my early jobs, I had a, a big project to convert the uh, firewall rules from, you know, an old style to a new style, Stay, same vendor. So it was really just a, a nomenclature change, a little bit of, of a couple things. And, uh, you know, I was given a tremendous amount of time to solve this problem because they assumed we would all do the work manually. And instead, you know, within an, an hour of, of messing around with Pearl, uh, you know, I was done. And, and so, you know, big, big win at work for that. But it was also a reminder to me, it's like, Hey, there's, there's better ways to do things. So I go way back with Pearl. I, me and Pearl are not super friends anymore. I mean, I'm appreciative of, of the, uh, of the, you know, the, the background and, and the help and the kick forward for me. Uh, I, I can't, I, you know, to be honest, I, I can't even read all this anymore. Um, but I get the gist of what, what he's doing is effectively taking the packet capture, which is, uh, you know, when you're reading it, you're reading it out to text file and, and then he's pulling out the keys based on these, uh, these values that are showing up with uh, CR and ES and HSC and, and, and all that. And then he's building the information that needs to be built for, and it's down here. Yeah. So he's effectively pulling all that out and then building a file of, I, I need to know the client early secrets, the client um, handshake secrets, and then, and then, you know, each iteration of a key after that, uh, a session key. And so then he's building that, uh, that session secrets file. And, and he's, he's doing that with Perl. I would not use Perl. I would use Python, obviously, because it's the best. Actually, I'm kidding. It's my favorite. I won't say Python's the best because every tool has its place in your toolbox, right? I love Python. It, 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 it by far I will try and make the hammer um, that is Python into a screwdriver and a saw and you know a, a, a block and tackle and whatever. I'll I'll try and make it into everything, but it's not always the best uh, tool for the um, for the job. And so you know your mileage may vary. Use the tool that works for you. Uh, but Python's my favorite. But I wanted to give him a shout out because uh, he he's done some of this already in Perl and. And we could do this again in in Python, but we're we're actually able to skip that, and and I'll show you how uh, we're we're going to do that um, here in a little bit. All right, so back to the I rules. Uh, I'll show you my I rules first, 
Um, where is my, oh, let me go over here. Okay. So this is the, the last iteration that we started at. Let me come up here to the iWorld. Okay. So with the, um, the original TLS 1.2 and early iRules, uh, or rather the uh, before TLS 1.3, you apply these iRules based on whether you had uh, caching enabled uh, in your profiles. And, and so this solution looks to see if you have caching enabled and then applies the appropriate iRule. And it looks at, for client side and server side, pulling out those, pu pulling out those values. And what's missing on that, and, and Jurgen mentioned that in the original article, and then he built his own solution, is that this doesn't work for TLS 1.3. And, and so if I come back over here, uh, in one of the, the, um, one of the classes on, uh, you can go out to clouddocs.fi.com. There's a whole bunch of classes that we've taught at Agility before. All the content for that is out there. And if you reach out to your, uh, your local sales engineer, sales rep, uh, usually if there's a lab out there that attracts you, you want to run through, you can reach out to them and, th and they can, you know, create an instance in UDF and, and be able to walk through those classes. But that said, all the content is out there on Cloud Docs and, and you can go consume that. This is one of those classes and it was troubleshooting with TCP dump and Wireshark. And, and this is where you can actually pull out the uh, TLS 1.3 session keys as well. And so this is a longer I rule. You're just pulling out more data. And then it also requires you to then, because you've logged all of that to var log LTM, it requires you to go through this series of, of greps to be able to pull all that out. And then once you have that, then you know you could download the same sessions file and then uh, and then you know merge that in to um, you know merge that in with your edit cap to to be able to have a decrypted packet capture. And so we we will we could go that route. Uh, we're not going to go that route. I'm actually going to shift uh, from applying I rules, which is a more complex process in just enabling the the flags um, on uh, on the TCP dump command. And so the, the negative there is that when you enable it and you're going to take traffic, it's doing it for every connection coming through your box. And so you just need to know that your, um, you know, your log files are, are going to get a little bit bigger uh, for as long as you're taking that packet capture. Uh, and when you're writing to your logs, uh, a lot of data, uh, things can slow down a little bit. So you, you have to be careful about that. And, but it is possible. And uh, so we're going to, we're going to avoid the I rule writing and we're just going to take the data that's coming in the packet capture by enabling that system uh, DB key. But I want to let you know the I rule process is available. And, and what's, what's unique about this is like here, it's saying, go ahead and log it for everyone. What they say in the ask F5 solutions, if we come here, um, whether you specify a single IP. So if you're just testing your, your troubleshooting from a specific uh, source, then you can match that traffic either by the single IP or in this solution, they recommend going to uh, a data group. And so if you want to capture that from a, a, a group of source IPs, then throw those in a data group, match that, and then only log the, the session keys for those uh, you know, for those client source machines that, that you want to run your test traffic from. And so that would be the only difference there between what was uh, out in the appendix here uh, where it's capturing for everything. And that does then limit it back down. You're not quite writing everything that you wanted to write. All right. And I think that's all. I'll, I'll share all these, uh, these links from Ask F5 into the... Um, uh, the community page on Dev Central. You can go check those out. Uh, the I wanted to say one, oh, one more thing. The the SSL ciphers that are supported on every different platform. I've got uh, fifteen point one is what I've got on my box. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do that because we do need to build a uh, we need to build a, um, a, a cipher group uh, with some cipher rules in order to only capture TLS 1.3 traffic, because I already know this works uh, under TLS 1.3. And in fact, uh, Big IP, at least on 
X, uh, TLS 1.3 is disabled by default, and you need to customize your 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 profile in order to to see those, um, uh, or uh, in order to you know work with those on your system. So, anyway, I think I've laid enough foundation here. We can actually get to writing something. So let's go over to uh, the big IP real quick, and we will get in there. And so I set up a test VIP. This is a brand new machine. I'm, I'm just getting everything moved off of my Macs. I don't know about all of you, but I, I, I walked into at work. They said, hey, you're eligible for an upgrade and you can go onto the Apple Silicon. I was like, yes, bring me up to M1 in the modern and I'm excited and everything. It turns out a lot of the things that I do require Intel architecture. And so there's so much that doesn't work on Apple Silicon and you know me being able to install VMware Fusion and run Big IP on my local laptop is one of those things. And so I do still have my old machine that I've, I'm pulling files off of, but I've got to move all, all of my old iRules and all that. So anyway, all that to say, brand new machine. It's only got what I need for this demo setup so far, but that'll be coming. And so I have this test VIP that is set up. It's got minimal profiles to support HTTP traffic. Um, I have another test box. Um, if I was going to draw... Um, do presentify. Let me do this. I'll I'll do it right here in the box. Um, where did my present go? Um, maybe I will do that. Okay, there we go. So I can annotate on screen here real quick. Let me do a different color so you can see it. Okay, so I've got this Intel Nook sitting out here. And then I've got in there, I've got my big IP and I've got this just Ubuntu image lying in there. And then I have uh, a couple different networks. Of course, I've got the the network that comes over to me. It's a bridge network that comes out and I can get to it from my desktop. And then I have just two networks that that is not going to work. Um, let me change that. Okay, so there we go. I've got a network there and a network here. And effectively, this is the client side and this is the server side. Okay, so I'm able to connect to both of these boxes to run tests and... And then I am going to initiate traffic on this side. If I just draw a, uh, this is uh, uh, on this side. I'm just going to use curl to connect to here. My VIP is on this side. And that is, uh, you know, that's if I draw a lock here, whoop, that is locked. So that's going to be SSL over here. And then on this side, you know, this is my pool member here. And that's just an Nginx instance running on my test box here. So I can source and destination my test traffic on a single box, and I'm just kind of looping through the big IP. Um, so that's that's the that's what we're looking at here. And so I can end that. All right. And so with the cipher rules, just to make sure I'm only getting the the traffic that I want here is uh, TLS uh, 1.3 only. And so by establishing the Cypher suite TLS v1 underscore three, and, and just choosing defaults that, you know, roll up to, to, that, to that suite, um, there's only three, it's, it's these three. And so I can guarantee that if my big IP is gonna respond at all uh, in the server hello, it's gonna say, hey, this is what I got and, and, uh, and, and choose from there. So, so, you know, as long as my client curl, which, you know, curl should support that. I should get TLS 1.3 traffic to be able to test that what we're building today is actually going to work. And so let me find my curl box. Um, and I'll bring it over into screen so that you guys can see what's going on here. Um, let me bring that. Over. Okay. And we can make him 
sample size. Okay. And so if I do a curl here uh, to that VIP and, and, and say, hey, go ahead and use 1.3, if I'm successful, I'm a little bit verbose there, but if I'm successful, it means, hey, we, we had a successful test there. So at least our, our test traffic, we're, we're working and that, that's good. We're good to go. All right. So now let's talk about building out a change here. And first we want to go ahead and create a new branch. Hit checkout dash B, uh, new dot TLS one dot TLS one three. Let's do it proper. Support. Okay. So now I'm in new branch, so I'm not destroying anything that I already built. And oh, I'm kind of burying the terminal there. You guys can't see with where I am. Let me move that real quick. Just so if I'm in the terminal, um, you guys can see what we're doing. Slide over there. Okay. And how is that for size? Anybody give me a thumbs up, thumbs down on, on whether things are too small. And let me come to comments here, how we're doing. Um, that is a fantastic feature. Uh, assuming that's the FI flag and the, the uh, database key. Um, yes, it is. It is a fantastic feature. Uh, Josh had a question uh, off topic. Josh, come on. <laughs> I'm kidding. Anything. Ask anything. We can take notes and, and keep it for the future. Uh, for uh, for distributed cloud, I really like to see some detailed guidance for estimating costs, maybe as a part of a future Dev Central Connects. Um, you know, we tend to stay away from the financial side uh, on on these shows only because, you know, we we can probably get in a lot of trouble talking about that. Uh, but, uh, you know, we can certainly have a, a conversation internally and see if that's something that we would do uh, live versus being able to just have a, a, a sidebar with with you and and discuss that. And uh, size is okay. Thanks, Josh. Appreciate that. And uh, and Danger Force Idol. I love your your name, by the way. Uh, flag, yes. Good deal. Okay. So we have the two files there. Because it's going to be so different, I'm just going to go ahead and create a new one from this one. So let's just uh, copy and paste. And we can just pull stuff out. And let's just see. Um, TLS. D1.3. Okay. And so we don't really know what this is going to do yet. I'm, we're not going to touch that yet. But we do know that we're, yes, I do want to add that. And we do know that we are not going to use these rules. So we can pull those out. And the great thing about using Git, if you, if you aren't using Git, even if you're not um, doing a lot of... Um, integration with with other people or you're not even maybe writing code but you're just like tracking uh configurations for systems it's fantastic to be able to throw something in there make a commit and then make changes because it, it you know unroll or you know uh you know rollback is such a wonderful thing you don't have to think oh man what was that change three weeks ago i really need that you can look it up uh, on all your different uh commit messages and, and all that so um, we do need the TCP dump bash string that will change, right? We need to reference what that kind of looks like in, uh, one of these other, uh, files, um, how to decrypt. Where is the, not the I rule. There we go. Uh, so they've got this, uh, dash, dash, dash F five SSL. Um, and you know, colon zero dot zero dot colon. So we're we're taking all the you know the low, medium, and high for the F5 Ethernet trailer as well. We want to be able to look at those that information, and then we want to make sure we're capturing the SSL information. And so that we need to we need to change. So with this uh, in here, when you're running packet captures remotely, you want to be able to not just execute the TCP dump, but you want to make sure it stops whether anything else happens. So, you know, I've got the, the timeout um, against uh, SIG kill for however many seconds you want this TCP dump to, 
to run. So if you think you're going to be able to send your packet capture data um, from your your you know source machine within 60 seconds or 30 seconds, whatever you want to set, um, you know you you just send that in when you run the script on how many seconds you want it to run, and and then that'll update uh, right here under CapSex, and then the virtual IP that you're going to test against, and uh, you don't have to memorize the virtual IP because I just ask for the name of the VIP, uh, or yeah, the name of the VIP object, and then it'll it'll look that up for you, and then it does. This is you know I just titled this auto cap and date string, so it just takes the the date of you know date time and and puts that into shared images and I move it into shared images because that is a very large store on big IP. You don't want that necessarily in your, um, in your directories that'll, that'll fill up a lot faster. And, and so uh, shared images is pretty big because that's where your, your ISOs go uh, for updates and get credentials. Isn't going to change. Instantiating big IP isn't going to change create. I rule. We actually don't even need because we're not going to, we're not going to create I rules. And so that's good. Pull out a bunch of code there. Apply I rule, remove I rule, delete I rule. We don't need any of that. So code is getting simplified here. That is, uh, that's a great thing. Anything we can do to simplify code is a good thing. And we do need to download files. Uh, we do need to prompt the user. Running TCP dump, we'll change that. Uh, come back to that. Where do we start there? Line 49, okay. Uh, delete files. Yes, we still want to delete files. Um, we don't care about session cache enabling yet because we're not applying the I rules. So I don't need that. Uh, the user responses, we're creating the key file. We actually don't need to create the key file either if we are, um, if we're binding that information in the TCB dump itself. So, man, this, this is going to this be great. I love, I love solutions where I get to remove way more code than I'm actually going to write. Uh, that's fantastic. And uh, so download files, I do need that. Uh, I do need to delete files. Um, I don't care about the SSL profile anymore either because uh, I use that function here. Yes, Josh, you're right. Uh, shared shared temp, uh, really anything, anything shared, I think is gonna be pretty safe. So you could even create your own. Um, you know, I'm not definitive on that, but I think, I think shared is the map, the volume. And so whether it's shared temp, shared, shared images or whatever, the reason I move everything into shared images is because there is a rest worker in shared images that allows you to download files from there. Uh, so it saves me a step of creating it in shared temp and then moving it to shared images to be able to download. And so that's the only reason I put it directly into shared images is because of that I control rest worker. And so I don't need the I don't need the profile, but yeah, I use that in order to determine whether it was a um, a, a cache uh, associated or not. Um, I think. Yeah, I think we can uh, we can rebuild that if we need to, and then decrypt capture. So here is the edit cap, and that actually shouldn't need to change. Uh, the only thing that I'll need to do is um, is either add to this function or create a different function of um, you know pulling the keys out of the um, uh, of the packet capture. So maybe we'll just create a we'll create a separate function for that. Um, I'm on the fence. Hold on just a second. That is um, that is my wife. She's on her way home and probably forgot I was doing a live stream. So I apologize for that. Um, I'm on the fence with, with development a lot. Uh, there's different, you know, like patterns and anti-patterns with, with coding. And I'm, I'm still trying to learn, you know, best, best practices and, and all that and where it makes sense to, uh, to take them and where it makes sense to avoid them. And, and uh, you know, some of the patterns are, you know, make a function do one thing. And or you know one primary thing that you're trying to do, and so if I'm actually trying to extract the keys, well, that's different than de decrypting the capture. And so maybe we should have a function for that. So, uh, so we can say extract the keys, uh, which means I need the TCP dump file for that, and then I'm going to uh, return, uh, and return the 
yeah. We file. That's that's what yeah. And so node that's something else, I think. Key file. Stop updating. <laughs> All right. So we'll get there. We'll we'll figure that out here in a minute. And so decrypt the packet capture. That will be what we'll pass here uh, is this file. And so uh, I don't think we need to do anything in that function. So let's look down here uh, to uh, let's let's look through the workflow. Let's fix the workflow and then we can we can change what we need to change here. And so here uh, we're going to instantiate big IP. That's good. Uh, we don't care about the profile name. We don't really care about applying the rule. All of that stuff doesn't matter. Um, I guess if we wanted to be uh, hard and fast on this, we could pull that back because rather than just checking to make sure it had uh, the right features on the profile, make sure it has a profile at all because I don't want to do a TCP dump uh, for session keys against a virtual that was supplied that doesn't actually have SSL running. But, you know, I'll look at that later and I'll update that later if, 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 if I need to, to make that more complete. But we don't actually need any of this stuff in here to be able to just run a packet capture. So uh, we're gonna instantiate big IP. Um, we're gonna run and the session key file uh, is going to be extract keys, right? That's the extract the keys. And we don't need any of that because we're not downloading anything there. So the session key file, and we're going to pass the TCP dump file to that. I think. Oh, what is happening with my auto? Okay. Let me see what that actually is returning real quick. And uh, for those of you who are seasoned Python developers and you're judging me right now because I don't have type hints and I would know what it's returning if I had my my type hints in there. I know, I know, I need to get on it, but I haven't yet, so uh, bear with me. So return, oh yeah, it is returning a file. So, uh, so I want to be able to take that file then uh, and pass it to extract keys. And then we're going to download files. I only need... Uh, the TCP dump file. And so I'll go fix download files. Um, delete files. I don't need to delete that one because there won't be one anymore. Uh, decrypt the packet capture. We'll still need to do that. And so um, I think from a workflow perspective, that's right. Download files and delete files. Let me fix those. Um, so I can take that out and pull that out. Okay. And so now we need to return this key file. And so in this, this is where we actually want to use um, uh, T-Shark uh, to be able to do this. And, and real quick, I wanted to show you what this, what this uh, capture looks like when you have the right tools. If you open the Wireshark, um, if you open the, the downloaded uh, capture with the keys embedded in Wireshark natively, you won't see any of this data because it, it's, not, it's not configured to, to see it. Uh, but it's there. And and so if you look at this file, you can see uh, starting on packet five, I think. Um, and this is a, an old capture uh, that I took uh, yesterday when I was just trying to get, get a feel for, for what was going to be required. But you can see here in this this data where, where let me see, do, 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 these keys. Okay, 1.3 SR. You see that, and uh, so you got the um, the 
I'm I'm getting lost in all the text. It it would be prettier a different way. But anyway, you can see the uh, the one dot three information and all these keys. Um, there was another one. Oh yeah, up here, higher in the packet capture. So you've got your. Uh, yeah, there we go. So your handshake secret and your handshake secret uh, 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 fin, and then your um, yeah. So anyway, you got you got all your one dot three uh, TLS one dot three stuff in in these pack captures. You won't see it in Wireshark if you just bring it up, uh, but it's there. And so what you can do is you can use uh, T Shark uh, to be able to pull that out. And T Shark is the command line version of Wireshark, and the um, the 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 uh, the command syntax here. I'm just going to bring in as a comment for here until we uh, do something with it. So comment, and there is the there's the command. And so we need to um, build that out as a sub process. So you know that's the command. He's got that as a um, as an f string uh, to be able to put all of this information in uh, as appropriate. And so um, and so we need to take the TCP dump file, which is. Uh, which is this, right? So we need to we need to abstract that. So if we do our command here, um, command equals f uh, t shark and that's not he doesn't end it. I don't end up actually using this here. Um, I'm using a sub process to be able to do it. So it's a uh, uh, you know um, doesn't do uh, standard out and, and, you know, make a mess of things. And so, but we're going to build it here and then we'll build it here. And then, and then we'll show where, uh, the, uh, the thing is actually decrypted. And then we need to update our TCP dump, um, run TCP dump because that, that needs to change as well. But let's go ahead and do our, our extraction here. And so that's a T shark dash R. Um, and this is, um, the, TCP dump file, right? Then we need dash y f five eth trailer tls key log t fields dash e f five eth trailer dot tls dot key log, and then oh man, we got some set in there that's gonna mess with my uh, it's gonna mess with my um, let me do this. Change that. And then said HS. And I'm going to have to fix that. Um, and we'll just call that session keys dash PMS. Okay. And then that. Should work. Um, that's what we want to call the session key file. And now, if we wanted to pass in what that name needed to be, that'd be fine. But um, but we aren't downloading a file; we're creating a file, so it, it we don't we can just make that static. Um, so I actually need to backslash that. Um, I might have to backslash more of that, but we'll see. Because I don't want to create an actual new line there. I want to offset that. Is that I have to do that twice. We'll, we'll figure that out. And then, and so that is that, that's what that's going to look like. Um, but let's go ahead and do this and we'll recreate that whole thing. Um, okay, extract keys. Did key file. 
the what I want to do there is shark. Um, okay. Dash R. I may have to look up subprocess again because it's been a little while and I don't know if I need to space that or what is going on. Okay. Okay. And then dash Y. I'm just going to pull all these out. What happened there? Okay. F. Uh, so we need, after that, we need a dash Y. I don't need the F for that. And, uh, and then I need F5 ETH trailer TLS key log. Caught up in the syntax of it all. Um, oh, thanks, Josh. Yeah. <laughs> and then, what in the world? Spacing is weird. Um, and then I need T fields. Do not like spacing that's happening here. Dash E. And then F5, ETH, trailer, TLS, uh, key log. Okay, well, I'm going to just, oh, takes me out of there. Um, and then uh, said, And then here is the S, S, and G. E. Um, I wonder if I need that in, I not need that in there. Well, if it's a string, it's an interpret, so I probably do. And then um, there. Forgot my comma. And then EMS. Okay. So that should be good there. And and I probably don't need to return anything there because it's just going to create that file. So I don't need to return that. It'll just create it. And so I could do a return none or just, you know, I'll be explicit about it. Okay. And I don't need necessarily need this file, but, uh, or this uh, reference, but just in case I need to do any debugging on it, I'll, I'll keep it there. Okay. And then of course I would have a copy. Of course, I always start to try and, and say, "Hey, let's let's make something work," and then and then I try and clean it up and, and make it work well. Okay, uh, extracted keys. Keys file is um, I'm not moving anything into a directory. I'm just it's just local um, for this, so I don't need any of that. I can just say for now, session keys.pms. That doesn't need to be an F string. And why is that? No, 
That's because I've got it below the return none. Okay, thank you for uh, uh, linters that, that highlight us and tell us about that stuff. Um, yeah, yep, you're right. Uh, don't forget the comma on line 184 or 104. Did I miss one? Oh, yep, thank you. So, whoa, that, okay. Uh, thank you for all of you uh, eyeballs out there that are that are helping with that. Um, yep, you're right. Thank you. Uh, so, Danger Force Idol again. Still love your name. Uh, thank you for for all the help out there, keeping me honest. All right. So let's uh, let's see. Um, do we have? We could probably actually just test the extraction function since I have. Um, let me grab a an encrypted file that I know um, came down. Let me copy that and put it in here. Uh, don't want to add that to the thing. Okay. So I have an encrypted file here. If we... have the extracted keys what what am i getting here line too long okay no big deal um that's fine um okay so i should be able to go to the python console um and then from plsv 1.3 captures import keys And so if I do extract keys, um, my cap dot p cap, what happens? And do I have a file up there? Let's see, Go back to terminal. That did nothing. Um, interesting. Let's see. Let me check and see if it put it in its own, uh, in its own world on the the system. Uh. Nope, I don't see it out there. Okay, what are, how are we doing on time? Uh, I have a hard stop in six minutes, so we might not get through all this today. I might have to... Uh, Pick this up later tonight, and I'll I'll just I'll just you know unannounced we'll just pick it back up, and you guys can come join me again. If not, all this will be saved. the The repository will be out there, and uh, you guys can um, you know uh, pick it up from there. But uh, I think let's just do the T shark. Let's just actually just try to make the the T shark work and extract the keys and see if we uh, if we have success on that front. So we know that this works. Um, so if I um, make sure T-Shark is there, okay, definitely there. So I'm in PCAP Utilities. If I do T-Shark dash R, uh, my cap dot PCAP, the five ETH trailer TLS key log, Fields dash E F five ETH trailer uh, dot TLS dot key log said S 
this. Sorry about that. Uh, and B. Um, and then pre. Well, let me, let's do session keys. PMS. Okay. And so we do have a session keys there now. That's good. And then we can use our edit cap. So let's go down and get that. And edit cap inject secrets TLS. And this is the session key file, which is uh, session keys.pms. Um, and then we want to take our TCP dump file, which is my cap.pcap. And and then we want to see uh, our decrypted mycap.pcap. All right, so that should be done. And if we do ls-l, we see our decrypted file. Okay, so if I bring up Wireshark, then um, we should be able to see, um, let, me, let me launch Wireshark here. And in the couple minutes we have left, we can at least see that, that the work we've done does not require any kind of iRules at all to see TLS 1.3 traffic. So let me bring this over. First, we'll look at our encrypted file. And we want uh, JROM, PyCharm projects, PCAP utilities. OK. So first, we want our original capture. And this was, OK, so we see it's TLS 1.3 on the front side, you know, our 101. Uh, this is the client side. This is the server side. 102 is the server side. Uh, so we see server side is unencrypted, but but client side is encrypted. OK, got that. So with our decrypted one, we should see now that the uh, that that front that client side is also decrypted. And so decrypted, we see uh, the client hellos, but then one on one, okay, there we go. So now we're in we're unencrypted on the client side. And you can see even down here, you know, your decrypted TLS. So, uh, so that's good on the get side, and then on the return side, you should see that as well uh, with uh, 101.50. Yeah, back out, and you see the um, that's the fin act, and you got the client side return, and you get the you can see obviously the HTTP uh, that's in there as well. So we know that the process works. Now it's just a, a process of me figuring out the Python side of it, making sure that, that, uh, you know, all my, and I, I'm quite confident it is, you know, I'm, I'm messed up somewhere, uh, in here. I've got to, I got to get this figured out. The said part in particular, um, I'm thinking is, is where, uh, I'm not exactly working. So I'll figure that out and, and we'll, uh, we'll come together and, and, and see it work for real and we'll be able to do that. So anyway, we're up against a hard line for me. I thank you all for joining me today. This was a lot of fun to kind of walk through uh, the process. Uh, for those who have asked, you know, yes, uh, Jurgen, who who said, you know, from the beginning, he's like, hey, the solution you built was great, but it doesn't handle TLS 1.3. Uh, that was great because it actually got me to revisit it. And now, once we figure out this last little piece, don't need to worry about adding I rules. And there was a lot of complexity in that solution. Really, with this solution, it's just it's just taking the TCP dump, downloading it, doing all the rest of the work on the client side with T Shark and with Edit Cap, and then you're good to go with uh, with analyzing your your um, uh, your captures. So uh, Josh has a question here. Read a note that pipes aren't handled by default and sub process. Might need to use multiples and connect them together with. Oh, okay. That is, uh, do you need the said part if it's scripted? Uh, probably not. I, I can probably do that differently uh, if, uh, because it, you know, one, I'm not a, a said doctor. And so I, it looks like it's just taking uh, anything on a new line and, and looking through uh, to pull that data out. So I, I can, I can look at that. Um, let, 
The other thing we can do is we can actually just open that file. Um, what is it? What is it doing from what was original? So if we take this, yeah, it's pulling out the 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 uh, handshake secrets and then uh, the traffic secrets, and and so uh, yeah, thank you, Josh. I'll I'll look into that as well. And then um, and and Danger Foresight. thank you. And uh, Poseidon, hello. Uh, glad to see you. But we're actually we're actually closing up shop. So um, you can watch this back. And, uh, you know, if I get this working, I may just pop on live later today and uh, and show you the end result and then, you know, call it call it good. And, and I'll record it again uh, for uh, for, you know, later. Uh, but thank you all for joining me today. We didn't end it a solution before I had my hard stop. Apologize for that. Uh, but it's always a lot of fun to just kind of talk code and, and work through stuff. And and uh, if you like to see stuff like this and you would like, you know, to see us look at other things, Josh, you mentioned uh, uh, distributed cloud and in and, and pricing. But if there's other stuff that you want to look at, uh, let us know. Drop in the comments. Uh, join us on Dev Central. Ask there. Submit ideas. And, and we're going to keep doing this thing. And uh, join us again next week uh, on Tuesday. Boo has a Sebastian Maniac at... Um, at uh, 8.30 a.m. Pacific on Tuesday, uh, right here. And and then uh, Aubrey and I are going to build out a uh, multi-cloud environment between uh, his customer edge and my customer edge. And that's the first of many in a series that, that we're going to do on, on building out an application and publishing it. So uh, come uh, join us as often as you're able. Uh, we love uh, doing these things and, and uh, uh, we love the community. So have a great day. Uh, enjoy your weekend that's coming up. And uh, we'll see you out there in the community. Take care.